Hello everyone, this is Evangelist Emmanuel Emeka Okay, okay. I want to say a big thank you to every single one of you that is tuned in and a big thank you to every single one of you that have been sharing the videos. Uh, may God bless you, increase you, and take you to a greater height in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you very much for everything you're doing now. And I want to be, I want to go, um, first of all, if you have not joined us on our YouTube page, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube page, um, go to Evangelist Emmanuel and make our on YouTube and subscribe. If you have not um, subscribed to our Facebook page, then which you're watching here, both on YouTube and on Facebook, you can go to Evangelist Emmanuel Okeke. On YouTube is Evangelist Emmanuel Emeka Okeke. While on Facebook is Evangelist Emmanuel Okeke. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay, now I want to talk about a pressing need that I think is very, very important for us to understand. See, one of the biggest challenges that we as a believer, we as a Christian are passing through is the ability to understand that most time we are being caged not by ourselves but by the man of God that is beside us. Some people that claim, some people that are men of God, sometimes pastors, are the ones that are actually cages from moving forward to the next glory. You see, every single person has a spiritual gift inside of them. You, as you're watching me, you have a spiritual gift inside of you that God has ordained and destiny for you. There's a difference between the purpose and ambition. Is, your, is God purpose for you to manifest in the spirit, to manifest in his, uh, in his glory, to become uh, an apostle, to become an evangelist, to become a prophet, to become a preacher, to become a teacher, and the rest of it, you know, preacher, um, teachers, preachers, and pastors are similar kind of thing. They are all these five things that make up a good church. They make up a church. That make up the church. Not just a good church. That make up the church. We have the apostle. We have the prophet. We have the evangelist. Uh, we have the pastors, and we have the teachers. These are very, very important. Now, you find that some pastors are preaching and telling you that speaking in tongues is not uh, anything. That is nothing. Speaking in tongues as a Christian, speaking in tongues is one of the most special and most valuable gifts you have as a Christian. It is important you speak in tongues. It is important you practice your speaking in tongues. It is important you let the Holy Spirit speak through you. When you speak in tongues, you read the book of Acts and the book of Corinthians, you find out that when you speak in tongues, your heart speaks to God. You speak to God. You speak the deep things of God. You speak directly to God Almighty. And not even the devil can intercede in those prayers. Not even the devil can interrupt those prayers. When you speak in tongues, it just comes. Like, it's a natural thing. Like, to me, whenever I am teaching or preaching the gospel, the speaking in tongues just manifests. It just comes. The gift just comes. And I just start. I see. I find myself speaking in tongues. And it's a beautiful thing. When you speak in tongues, a lot of things happen. I was preaching to a lady. Uh, my testimony, I was speaking to a lady once at a time on the phone. I was praying to her on the phone, ministering to her on the phone. While we were ministering, if that I start speaking in tongues, the demon started manifesting. The power of God started hitting her. That, the spirit that was disturbing and holding her from achieving what she was meant to achieve started manifesting. So speaking in tongues is a very good gift, but I'm not talking about speaking in tongues today. I want to talk about pastors. So men of God will tell you, don't go to any other church apart from this church. And you have been in that church for two years and nothing has changed in your life. In fact, as a matter of fact, you're dropping. Your spiritual level is not even encouraged. But yet there's another, if you want to know, but yet there's another of your friend that is in that church that is a selling. See, every man of God has their own disciple. Have their own discipleship. Every man of God has someone that God has ordained that this person will be under you and through you, this person will receive the blessing. That is how life is. There's somebody that unlocks your blessing. There's someone that God has destined to unlock your blessing. The Bible says, ask. A-S-K, -A ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall come to do. Now when you ask, Father, I need your power. God said, okay, I am here, the Holy Spirit is with you. Now you have to seek for that Holy Spirit. That means you have to seek for people that have the Holy Spirit. If I want to be a prophet, I have to seek for a prophet and become close to that prophet. I said, prophet, I want that thing that is manifesting you to manifest inside of me. Now what, I, what is it? I'm called as an evangelist. But now I want the gift of prophets, prophetic gift. I have to leave. Listen, the pa my pastor in my church doesn't have the gift of the prophetic gift. He's called in. The, these are all prophetic departments, but he's a pastor. He doesn't have the gift to see tomorrow, or he doesn't have the gift to um, um, go into deep forensic prophecy. In the sense that he'll be calling phone numbers, um, calling people age, date of birth, and everything. You understand? He doesn't have that gift. Now you go. You can go to a man of God that has that gift. That way, he's a seek. Seek doesn't mean one person. Seek means seek for. Seek for a particular person that has that anointing. I meet a man of God that has that anointing. What is the man of God anointing? This man of God anointing is that he can see the vision, he can see tomorrow. Whatever prophecy he talks about happen, he sees it. Now, how do I get this anointing from this man of God? I walk with this man of God, please, can I lend under you? I want to have the same gift that you have. I want to be able to see. The man of God is a prophet. He knows the thing that the Holy Spirit has put him through. He will put you that same through. He will explain to you, this is how you get this gift. This is how to get this gift. This is what God wants you to do. Because the prophet, he can pinpoint what God needs you to do for you to acquire a certain kind of gift. He will tell you, God, for you to get this kind of gift, they can lay hands. That's like what Paul did to me. He said, Timothy, stay up the gift I planted in you by laying of hands. 
Timothy, Paul planted a gift of evangelism into Timothy by laying hands upon Timothy. He laid hands upon Timothy and Timothy received that gift. Peter, what happened to Peter? When Peter, when um, the Spirit of God ministered to Peter and Peter saw um, clean, um, unclean animals and he said, how can I eat? I've never tested food that are unclean. I've not eaten food that are not clean. I can't eat this food. The, Spirit, the angel of the Lord told him, kill and eat. He said, no, I won't eat. Three times. Then the angel of the Lord told him, you cannot condemn what God has made clean. You cannot call what God has made clean unclean. And that was why when he went to lay hand upon this place, he was laying hand, all of them started manifesting the same power, in the same grace that him was manifesting. What was the grace Peter was manifesting? Peter was manifesting the grace that when Peter is walking, his shadow rise the dead. So every single one of them were filled with that same grace that Peter was manifesting. When a man of God lays a hand upon you, you start manifesting with that same um, grace that the man of God walks with. So every single man of God that I have met, and I said, this is the great God, I want this man's grace. I keep into that faith. How do I keep into that faith? I can keep into that faith by sowing the seed in the man's heart. I can keep into that faith by becoming, coming close to that man of God and asking him, man of God, speak to me. I want to have the same thing. I can keep to that grace by saying, God, God, oh God, Father, as I have this envelope in my hand, as I give it to this man of God, let the grace that works to this man of God begin to work inside of me. There are so many ways you can keep into this grace, but that is not what I'm talking about today. I'll be talking about why do so many men of God, so many pastors, these people are called from God, no doubt. I'm not saying they are not called from God. I'm not saying they are forced to. They are saying men of God. They are called. They are anointed by God. But they end up, they, are, they, are, they don't understand certain mystery in the prophetic. And that's why some men of God will think they don't believe in prophecy. How can you not believe in the prophecy? Is everything Jesus Christ did not prophecy? Jesus Christ was able to prophesy even before his death. That is prophecy. Jesus Christ told Peter that before, by this time tomorrow you will deny me three times. That is prophecy. Even David was a prophet, but not a prophet that prophesied. If you read the book of Acts, you find that David was referred to as a prophet when he said, your Lord, My Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand and I will put your enemies under your feet. David saw the coming of Christ. Yes, you don't know. It is. David saw the coming of Christ. What am I trying to say? Many, most of us are being perished, are perished, or are perishing because of the kind of men of God we have. You have a dream. You say, man of God, I had this dream. In this dream, I was seeing a dog. A dog was chasing me. Man of God say, it's just malaria. <laughs> really? It's just malaria. Because you do not understand the department by which that person is operating. So people have the gift of dream, um, dream uh, prophetic. The prophetical dream department. I am in the prophetical dream department in the sense that God has given me the grace to be able to interpret dreams. To a certain level. I'm able to interpret dreams. There are some of you here that God has given you the dream to interpret dreams. There are some of you that God has given you the dream to dream, the gift to dream. You dream, and what you dream comes to pass. There are some of you here that you're watching that God has given you the prophetic vision. Every time you see yourself waking up by 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 45, you tell your pastor, why, why is it that every time you're waking up by 3 o'clock, your pastor say, ah, it's witchcraft. It's not witchcraft. Those are the hours that God is start telling you that you need to pray. You are an inter intercessor. You are someone that intercedes on people's behalf. There's a reason why they have firstborn, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So men of God don't understand what it means to be the firstborn, second and third, fourth. All these are different graces. There's a reason why your elder brother is the first child. There's a reason why you are the second. There's a reason why you are the third. There's a reason why you are the fourth. There's a reason why you are the fifth. There's a reason why you are the sixth. There's a reason why you are the seventh. Every single one of these has an importance. And so men of God don't know this importance. That's why they do not explain this importance to you. They do not teach you this importance because they do not know it. And instead of them to swallow their pride and let you know that I don't know this, Go to such a person and the person will reveal it to you. No. They wouldn't. Instead, they will tell you it is nothing. Don't worry about it. It's just nothing. It's a coincidence. In this life, there's nothing like coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. Every single thing on earth happens for a reason. There's a reason why you're watching this video. There's a reason why you are rebroadcast. You're watching this video the second time. There's a reason why you're downloading this video. There's a reason why I'm putting on this shit. There's a reason why I'm speaking to you. There's a reason why this camera is facing me right now. There's a reason why God has chosen here to be the place where I will do this particular video. There's a reason why I have this beard. There's a reason for everything. God knows. See, if God does not know what is about to happen to you, if God does not know what is about to happen to you, it's not God. The reason why you serve God is not just because He knows what's about to you, because He knows and He knows what is good for you. He said that the, the thief coming to steal and to destroy, but I come that that which you have, you have it and have it abundantly. God is the giver of every good thing. Even God is the God to the devil. Do you know that? God created the devil. He didn't create him as a devil. He created him as Lucifer. But he knew that he would deviate. He knew. 
But God is God that gives you choice. He knew that he would deviate. He knew that he knew that he would deviate. God knew that Adam and Eve would deviate. God knows everything. That was why there was a fruit of forbidden fruit and the fruit of uh, the fruit of good and evil and the fruit of life. God knows. God is God that gives a choice. Because a love that is being compared is no longer love. I don't want this video to be so long because I have a lot of things to talk about. But what am I trying to tell you? What I'm trying to tell you is this: that God knows everything. Don't let the man, your man of God, your pastor, don't let your uh, your teacher be the one to hold you down from achieving. Most of these people are perishing. Most of people are perishing. Some some teachers will not teach you the right thing. They will not teach you the truth. When you see yourself in a particular church for two years and nothing is going up and nothing is going up, and you see yourself praying continuously every single time you attend the fellowship, you attend the vigil, that is not where you are called. That is not the pastor that God has ordained to be the one to, uh, to revive you. You, don't, you must not go to a church where there is thousands of crowds to be revived. No. Just somebody on the streets that doesn't even have a ministry can lay hand upon you and revive you. Kre karabo shendereva, re prande us karabo ndereva. Zen de kerebo re prande karabo shendereva. Zen kerebo ndereva, re prande us karabo ndereva. Someone that you don't even know can revive your spirit. Someone you don't know from anywhere. Just one encounter, you hold hand with someone in the church. Or a guy will say, church is a building. Church, church becomes a church when two or three people gather. The, that way the Bible says, do not avoid the garden of the brethren. That is what makes a church. A church. Now the Bible says, oh, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. Whenever two or three are gathered in my name, you are here. But you, you yourself have to understand that you are even more than one. For Christ said that, Christ, Jesus Christ said that, I am in my Father and my Father is in me. And whoever believes in me is in me. That means if I am in Christ, that means and the Father is inside Christ. That means as I am right now, I have the Holy Spirit, I have the Father and I have the Son inside of me plus me. That means I'm four in one. Kerebo shendereva. Raprande uskarabunda. That means I'm four in one. And that we said that those that are with you are more than those that are against you. That way the Bible says, cast all my cares upon you for I carry for you. For if I be for you, then what can be against you? If God be for you, then what can be against you? What am I trying to say? Do not let the mentality of what many men of God are preaching to captivate you and hold you prisoner. These are churches of God. These are churches of God. Let no man preach to you and say, Ah, you must stay in my church to receive anointing. No, 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 no. If you see a man that has the gift of prophecy and you want prophecy, go and meet that man, tap into the grace, collect the gift of prophecy and come back to your church. If you see a man that has the gift of healing and miracles, go to that church, they be there, so they see, collect the, um, the gift of miracle from the person and come back. Now you have prophetic and, um, and gift of miracle. That is it. I never knew I could speak on the phone and demons would manifest. I met a friend of mine by name Tochuku. He told me that he was speaking to someone on the phone and the person was manifesting demon. I was like, hey. Then when I was watching the, um, uh, my prophet, Prophet Passion, Java, and I saw him, he was saying, he was saying that he was speaking to someone on the phone and the person was manifesting demon. I was like, God, how is this possible? I know it is possible. Don't don't get me wrong. I know it is possible. I was wondering, like, how is it possible for me? You know, I believe so much in God. I was asking myself, how is it possible for me? How can I manifest in this? Then God revealed something for me. God said, I heard a story, a story of a man that went to meet the sun. He said, the sun, come to my place. In my place, there is darkness. There has been darkness for years. There is no light in my place. And the sun said, okay, I'm coming there. The sun stood that place for three months and said, ah, young man, you said there is no darkness. I've been here for three months. How come I'm not seeing darkness? The sun forgot that he is light. Thereby, wherever there is light, the demon cannot, cannot stand. Wherever there is light, darkness cannot stay. Because whenever there is light, darkness runs away. So because I am light, if I call someone on the phone and there is a demon in that person, because of my presence and my voice, because whenever I speak, light comes. Because God said, let there be light, that was light. So when I speak, light comes through the phone. And when light goes through the phone, light goes through that room. That might the demon will manifest. I called a lady, she was. She said she was going through some challenges. As I was speaking to her, we were praying. She started, this demon started manifesting. And the spirit of, the demonic spirit left her. And the spirit of God came upon her. Just from the phone. It is not me, it is Christ in me that speaks. For Paul said that, for it is not I, but Christ in me that speaks. I am one with Christ. I know who I am in Christ. I am one with Christ. I am not righteous, but I am made righteous by Christ. I am not perfect, but God is the maker of perfection. We are not saved by the law. If you read the book of James, we are not saved by the law. But we are saved by the, the still sacrament of the blood of Jesus Christ. We set us free in the book of Zachariah. Now I pray for you. Now I pray for you, every spirit of destruction that has been affecting your mentality. Let me tell you that a man of God, you see, why, why is that you see a man of God? 
you will bring a man that has a headache, a man that is mad, into a particular church. This man of God has been rising the dead, but the man of God is not able to rise. Um, he has not been able to locate that man that is mad to cure him of his of his madness. But you go to another church, a little church, and a little church that has maybe hundred congregations stands up and lay hand upon the person. The boy, the young man, stands up and lay hand upon the person, and the madman receives um, sanity immediately. What am I trying to tell you? Every single one of you has someone that you're supposed to work under that will be the one to activate your blessing and unlock your gift. How do I mean by unlocking your gift? You need somebody to lay hand upon you for your gift to be unlocked. Paul, what happened to Paul? So he was called so before he became Paul. A man laid hand upon him. I don't want to mention the name, I want you to read. The man laid hand upon him. After he became blind, the man laid hand upon him and the gift of God was transferred into him. He was arrested by the Holy Spirit, though, but the Holy Spirit was not manifesting inside of him until then. there was a laying of hands. You need to lay hands. Someone needs to unlock your blessings. Someone needs to unlock, ah, oh, thank God to prophet passion. Someone needs to unlock you for you to manifest. I was doing a live video on Instagram. The live video on Instagram, as I was doing the live video, something happened. A lady was watching the video. As I was watching the video, a younger sister, a younger sister was watching with her as well. Instantly, a younger sister started speaking in tongues. The younger sister started manifesting in tongues from just video that they were watching. There is no distance from where God cannot be. There's no distance we are God. There's no distance in the present. In the time where we operate, the spiritual, the spiritual time, there is no time. We operate beyond time. We can put that is why in the Bible someone should take the stone to stand still and the stone stood still. I don't want to call it out to read your Bible. Go and Google it. Ask who was the person that said. Why I don't need most I don't like giving verses in the Bible is because when I give verses in the Bible, people just cram the verses you give them in the Bible and they don't go and read in depth. But when I say there was a man that said the stone to stop and the stone stood still. Then you will be forced to go and Google it. Who was the man that said the stone to stop and the stone to stop? When you find out, you now read up the story and then you will know. That is what I'm trying to tell you.